two pages. Can I cut? Can I do it now? Ready? Mm -hmm. Hi. <laughs> Hello. Okay, it is Sunday, May 14th right now. Yes, it is. Today we're going to be talking about social media's involvement in these high-profile crime cases and how it can both help and hurt police efforts. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be talking about the Gabby Petito case, which happened in the fall of 2021, and the Idaho murders, which happened um, fall of 2022. Gabby Petito was a woman who mysteriously disappeared while on a cross-country trip from Florida with her fiancé, Brian Laundrie, in the summer of 2021. The trip was meant to last four months over the summer and fall, but Gabby went missing in late August. And she wasn't reported missing until September 11th, 2021, after her fiance Brian showed up back in Florida with their white van without Gabby. And this sparked a massive police search for the missing woman, and it quickly spread onto social media piquing the interest of internet users all over the United States. And then Brian went missing on September 13th or 14th after his family reports that he left for a hike in the Carlton Reserve in Sarasota County, Florida. And this sparked one of the most reported um, and interested crime cases in the past several years. And I think it's important to note that they had their own YouTube channel, that they were vlogging yeah. and videoing their They posted trip. everything. I'm sure those, do you think those videos are still up? They are. They're yeah. still up. Um, we'll put a clip here. Gabby Petito never goes outside. <laughs> <laughs> It's hard to watch because their relationship seems so perfect and happy and they seem like so happy with each other when you never really know what's going on behind the scenes of those videos. Someone called the police on them after seeing what they called like a domestic dispute um, and they were pulled over in the Arches National Park in Moab, Utah. That was August 12th, 2021. August 12th. He seemed, even on like, like the police camera when they got pulled over, he seemed like chill. He was yeah, he seemed normal. Very, like, he manipulated situations for his benefit. And body cam footage showed Gabby extremely distraught, like crying while well, Brian was very calm. Um, it was almost like he was trying to get the police on his side. The they night. just gave them like a warning and left them on the Yeah, they room. went and they took him to a hotel room. And they left and Gabby like alone in a national <clears throat> park with their van. Um, and this video received a lot of backlash um, after she was reported missing and the case became very public because of how they treated the case. There's also a big question about yeah. if they did treat that differently, like what? How, so, how would it the actual case change the case? Because if they just pulled them over or brought him into the police station, she might be still. She, she might, still might be alive. even arrested her. Yeah. To this day, the hashtag um, Gabby Petito on TikTok has 2.1 billion views, which just shows how prevalent this case was on TikTok and Instagram and even YouTube. In this case specifically, I think it revealed a lot of the details that the police needed to find Gabby and establish a timeline. So there was this couple on YouTube who had a YouTube channel called Your Hype Couple, mm -hmm. and they were also in Arches National Park during the time that Gabby went missing, and somebody posted on TikTok a video of Gabby and Brian's white van, like, kind of, what was it, they, they just left it. ditched on the side of the road. Yeah, it was just ditched on the side of the road. Mm -hmm. And somebody took a TikTok video of it, and the couple saw the TikTok video and thought, wait, I feel like I've seen that before. Mm -hmm. So they went back to their footage that they took on their trip, because they posted it on YouTube, yeah. and they saw the white van in their footage. They found that, like, oh my god, that's Gabby Petito's van. Mm -hmm. And they knew where it was, and they could help the police. Social media find. was so helpful with creating like a really specific timeline of yes. everything that happened. Yeah. In this and case. so they submitted that footage, and when they did, the police went to that exact place 
of where they last saw their van, and after um, looking in that area, they found Gabby's remains. If that TikTok video was never posted, or if they never had a YouTube channel and they never saw the white van in the background of their footage, like, it might have come out completely differently. Then there was also the entire fact about Gabby's own Instagram account and her right. posts, and how there was a large controversy because this entire trip, she's posting these things on her Instagram account with these super long, in lengthy captions yes. about everything they were doing. She was and very then suddenly, ugly. her last Instagram post um, on August 25th, 2021, um, it was a picture of her, and there was some, I don't exactly remember it perfectly, but there was some whole controversy about her hair, how they were like, did she get her hair done, like her roots were more blonde, mm -hmm. maybe that she wasn't a natural blonde, she's a natural right. brunette, so she would have had to go and get her, gotten her hair like lightened at some point during mm -hmm. this trip, it must have been an old photo because then all the vlogs from recently had been, her hair was darker, mm -hmm. and then the caption as well is what really tipped people off because it was just like a few, it was like a few heart emojis or something, right? It was a few, I think, pumpkin emojis, Yeah, which is really different than mm -hmm. what her normal behavior was, which caused people to think, is this really Gabby that's posting? The pr presence of social media, in this case specifically, I think is very difficult because they were so active on social media. They're posting all these photos of them like smiling and happy. And it's even, I think it, it even fooled, those, those photos on social media even fooled Gabby's own parents. Last communication she has, with her family, or you know, she had with her family, when she texted her mom on August 30th, and she was like, no service in Yosemite, because then they went to Yosemite, and that was pretty much the last they ever heard from her. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And so this was a nationwide manhunt. It spread all over, basically all platforms. Everyone knew about it. If you were scrolling on TikTok, you were bound to see a video about Gabby. And I think how how popular this case was, it um, tipped off one woman who posted a TikTok. Yeah, August 29th, Miranda Baker um, claims she picked up Brian, uh, Brian Lund, Lund, who was hitchhiking Lund. alone. Hi, my name is Miranda Baker, and on August 29th, my boyfriend and I picked up Brian at Grand Teton National Park at 5.30 at night at Coulter Bay. Um, I'm hoping this can help someone identify him because I saw him from TikTok, which then made me call the authorities, and um, my boyfriend and I have been in contact with a bunch of different people to help um, piece together different parts of this case. And then on um, September, right, September 1st, he was spotted. He went back to Florida where they lived, and he was alone. Why would he leave his fiance? Why would he leave his fiance on their the road trip? A road trip. Reported missing September 11th. September 13th, Laundry's parents tell police Brian left the family's home for a hike in the Carlton Reserve. There was also, people were getting really mad at Brian's parents. Right. Just like the public, like just random people were getting really upset at Brian's parents. And they were like protecting him. Knew about Gabby's murder and knew about her death and helped him hide it. I think for this case, a lot of people brought up how how nationwide this case was and why why was this case specifically so popular unfortunately this type of thing happens so much like type of mm -hmm. domestic violence cases happen so much but why was Gabby's case so popular in social media and a lot of people are saying it's because she fits that like pretty white girl who posts pretty on Instagram with her nice little fiance blonde white girl. Do you remember the uproar after that where people were mm -hmm. like, there's all these other people going missing and all this horrible it's, stuff happening. Oh, so true. It's true. It's true. Yeah. People they of know color. Their attraction. Indigenous women are going missing all and the time. Yeah. At a crazy rate. Crazy rate. Horrible. And and Gabby's family is doing an amazing thing. They are they setting up. They started a foundation to help find all missing women. Not just Regardless the any. women that look like Gabby. Mm -hmm. It's the women that really need their the cases house. to be popularized by social media because social media was re re really solved this case. If if all cases of missing women were being shown in social media, who knows how many people could be found, how many yeah. families could be put 
at peace. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just... Yeah. Yeah, I think let's go through the rest of the timeline and then we can move on to the Idaho murder. Yeah, yeah July 2021, um, they embark on their trip. August 12th, disorderly conduct stop with the police. August 19th, Gabby and Brian are back together and they film that vlog, Van Life. August 24th, they're spotted in Salt Lake City. August 25th, Gabby makes her last Instagram post with the weird caption. August 27th, the weird text to her mom, which we didn't really cover because I feel like uh, this was more a police thing, but it was something about her grandfather, and she, yes, and she, she dressed him by name. Yeah, she says, can you, know, you help Stan? I just keep getting his voicemails and missed calls. Gabby had never called her grandfather by her. Stan. By his it's first name. Thing. That was weird to her, but... So many people believe that Brian sent that text to yeah. show that she was alive at the time. That Pretty much anything him. after August 24th, when they were last spotted, most people believe that nothing posted beyond that point or communicated from mm -hmm. Gabby was, was actually, actually from Gabby. 29th was the hitchhiking claims. August 30th was a text that said no service in Yosemite to her mom. September 1st was when Brian returned back to Florida. September 11th, Gabby was reported missing. The 13th, um, Brian's family says that he went to a hike in the Carlton Reserve. September 16th, um, press conference is held and Gabby's parents actually asked social media to help like find her. They you know. even spoke about in interviews how they, they were happy that social media was getting so involved and they were using right. it to their advantage in this case. Right. September 18th, um, people start searching for laundry on the 24,000 acre Carlson Reserve. September 19th, remains found in Grand Teton National Park. So, the remains are found after this uh, YouTube couple um, submitted their tip of the van that they saw while mm -hmm. driving past, and that's how the police found her body. Uh, the coroners say that um, Gabby likely died three to four weeks before her body was found, which puts her death at around August 27th. We're back. We're back. We took a quick intermission. Madison Mogan, Ethan Chapin, Kaylee Gonsalves, and Zana Kernodal. Those are the names of the four students who got killed in the Idaho murders this past fall of 2022. So these murders happened in Moscow, Idaho, where these students all went to college. Um, college yeah. There were five of them living in this house together, and Zana's boyfriend, Ethan, would always visit. So six of them were in the house at the time of these murders. And the roommates, the surviving roommates, were named uh, Dylan Mortensen and Bethany Funky. Fun Funky. Dylan okay. is mostly referred to as, is only really referred to in police reports as DM for privacy reasons. Yes. And Funky isn't, she's not really talked about at all. No. The specific case was very popular on social media because of the internet's fascination with the fact that there was really no buildup and no sort of information about it. And how, how Crazy it is. Yeah, how gruesome it was. Gruesome. Those Four. photos of the, just a warning, we'll show the picture of the house, yes. but for anyone who needs to skip it, we'll do a little time, time stamp. stamp so you can skip to that point anywhere There is see it. blood, some blood shown in the photo. So this is a picture of the house um, with basically blood pouring on the walls. And that photo circulated like a wildfire, like so quickly. Everyone saw that photo. I think I saw that photo I before... I saw the photo before I even knew what the case was. And what happened was basically the the four people stabbed to death mm -hmm. by Brian Coburger. He was a criminology and forensic science major at Washington right. University getting his master's degree. He had gotten his, I believe, bachelor's or master's in psychology. Mm -hmm. He had two sisters who both worked in the psychology field. And yes. really there was no build up to this case. He didn't even live in Idaho. So what he did was he drove to Idaho and he Moscow, yeah. kind of stalked those individuals living in the house at the time and he drove by the house 13 times before um, he murdered them. Right. One of the things That's that he weird. said was kind of suspicious and people kind of felt uncomfortable around him. Was there any real connection though? There was so there was no, uh, actually, they, even to this day they found no really real connection between him and the actual students. The only thing that they really could find is that he was so fascinated by this criminology that he made this whole entire project where he made a Reddit post actually asking ex-cons who had murdered people what not, was going on in their head. I, oh yes, yeah. Yeah, ex-cons. 
like what was going through their heads when they actually killed someone and he blamed it on this entire thing of research but that obviously like seems very suspicious like normal yeah. people wouldn't do wouldn't that. ask even like, in like a project there. that they're doing for college they wouldn't send out he a wanted survey like, detailed to... descriptions of what was going yeah. on in their heads when they actually took someone's life it's almost like this was like part of his research like Gabby Petito yeah. was like if you know what like if you knew what happened, this would obviously show up as such a massive red flag uh -huh. that how could you skip over this? Like, was not, like how did no one... It's like, huh, I think we should maybe question this a little. Why is he doing this? <laughs> so, social media was very, very involved in this case. And I think for this case, differently... Like that helped. Different than, um, yeah, Gabby's case, it was it was more... I think it did... It hurt. Harm. Yeah. Uh, for, uh, one example was before they named Brian as a suspect, people were making so many theories. Because I think for Gabby's case, it was pretty clear that Brian was a person of interest. For this case, Brian, people sorry. were like very confused. Like, who would do this to for students? So people were there, <coughs> were making were not shy to make their claims and theories. And one user on TikTok, um, shown here shown here, uh, claimed that one of this uh, one of the individual's teachers was the one that murdered them. When I did Rebecca Schofield's reading and realized she ordered the murder of the two, but that turned into four college students at the University of Idaho, I didn't quite understand why she did it for respect and admiration. Like, I was like, what is this respect and admiration that she cares so much about and why? This was so harmful. To the, towards that teacher that the teacher even sued the TikToker for defamation because who just accuses People someone whatever they wanted to who yeah. accuses a, a random person of murdering, murdering four people they didn't have a suspect for so long that people who heard about it through social media started coming up with their own Well, suspects. the thing was is that they had a suspect, but the police were very meticulous not to release mm -hmm. it to the public because of how high profile this case was so they were found, um, the students were found November 13th, and the murder weapon with Coburger's DNA on it was found the 15th. Luncher was found right. that day, but you know, it was like, they talked about the murder weapon the 15th. The murder weapon was not found, but a knife sheath was found yeah. with his DNA in the little like clip there. And so they had his DNA and had a suspect from two days after the murder happened, but did not release it for months. Right. He was not careful about not leaving behind his DNA. The, another reason why this, the social media in this case did so much harm was that the police, is, it was an ongoing investigation. Um, the, they were, the police were receiving, te again, tens of thousands of tips every day. This is another case that the hashtags about this case received billions, billions. of views. I think this said 1.1 billion as yeah. of today. Um, and that's just with the hashtag Idaho murders. Other hashtags have millions of views as well. But I think because of how many accusations were being thrown around on social media, the police were trying to get those sorted out and not actually deal with the, deal actual, with the actual crime. Yeah. So these social media, this social media is draining the resources of the police, draining the time and resources that could be spent actually figuring out what happened on trying to shut down accusations and theories that had no evidence to back them up. I remember one theory was at 1.40 a.m., Kaylee and Madison were seen at a food truck, and there was some man sitting by them, I don't know, he was in a sweatshirt or something, and his hood was up, and immediately a bunch of people jumped and was like, he was the murderer, he was following them, he did this, he did that, he had no connection to them, no connection and to the crime whatsoever. whatsoever. Confrontation between two of the University of Idaho murder victims and another student uh, at a food it. truck. The time, 1.30 a.m., just hours before the murders. That man shown in the video was cleared by the police very early on, and even after he was cleared, people were quick to accuse him and yeah. say, you need to open back up his case, you need to interview him again. They already had a suspect <laughs> in mind when these people were like, oh, interview him again. There's people also too invested into their own theories about it that trying to solve the case, trying to solve it, that they didn't think about what the consequences of their actions could be. Yeah. So uh, Kaylee was, had just broken up with her, I think it was a pretty long time boyfriend. Mm -hmm. They even shared a dog with, uh, that was the dog in the house. The, yes, the dog was in the house. Um, 
and they had just broken up and people were going crazy on this boyfriend. Um, I think his name was Jack, I think. But, and he was like, clearly, the police had cleared him very quickly as well. But it's like people didn't even listen to the police or like what they were putting out. Like they people were just- People being cleared yeah. meant nothing to the public. Yeah. I remember um, there was a lot about DM who actually saw Brian in the house. Yeah. Um, and there was a lot of controversy surrounding that a lot of people getting really, really mad at DM about that and saying that it was her fault it was her that fault they were her. they couldn't be saved. The house was three stories tall. Yeah. The third story, <clears throat> there was two bedrooms. The dog was in one bedroom. Kaylee and Madison were in another were in another bedroom, all part of a floor plan. They died together in that bedroom. I believe it was that Kaylee died first and then Madison died next. They had been friends since they were little. This was heartbreaking to the public. It was like yeah. your childhood best friend and now they've died together. The second floor, which was kind of seen as the main level, it was kind of a weird layout, which is why a lot of people are confused about this case. The floor plan of the house was a little bit confusing, but on the second floor, which was the main floor where Brian entered from, uh, was Ethan Chapin and Xana Kernodal in one bedroom mm -hmm. and DM in another bedroom. And then on the mm -hmm. first primary floor, which was also kind of seen as the basement, uh, was uh, Bethany Funky. Mm -hmm. And then, um, so the bedroom that DM was actually in, which is labeled as bedroom C, was next to the stairs, but Brian didn't enter the room at all which no one really understands why, but he just didn't. He went to bedroom D, killed both Ethan and Xana. Ethan was standing in the doorway, Xana was in the bed. Mm -hmm. um, so <coughs> what happened was DM was in bedroom C, and Brian walked by, and she opened the door and saw him, and he passed right by her. Yeah. Um, and then after that, she locked herself in the bedroom. Right. Um, until until the in the morning or something like that. Like, until I think around 11. And 11, she, and, she and then there was a to call the police. So, uh, and people were questioning her brutally. Why wouldn't you call the police immediately? Why didn't you do this? Why didn't you go out and see if anyone else was alive? Why didn't you try to save them? This is a 19, 20 year old girl. Like, imagine, put yourself in her situation. You just heard. Saw some. You heard, she heard cry, she reported hearing, I think it was in the affidavit that was released, um, where she's reserved, uh, called DM. She heard crying, she heard commotion upstairs. If you see someone dressed in all black walk by you, tell me you're not going to be frozen in fear. Well, so that kind of shock of, isn't that happening? It's just so bizarre that how would you even be able to figure out if what was happening was real or not? It was yeah. the middle of the night. I'm sure she was exhausted. You could have been, like, literally, she could have thought she was, like, hallucinating or something. So those are two different cases um, of how social media affected um, crime cases very differently. In one case, it affected it in a somewhat positive way. In the other case, it was fairly negative. The, the um, Idaho case is still very much ongoing, uh, so more details may come to light. will probably be released to the public. Um, so there's still a lot of time for the public to um, become involved in social media, become involved further. Okay, bye!